middle so that we know uh, that we have extra seats. I think we're missing a couple of oh. the seats this morning. So if you have an extra seat, yes. <laughs> all right, let's see. Um, Heidi, did you want to do your announcement yes. right now? Yes. Broadway at 11, Colgate 11:45, Hurley 12:30, Teller 1:15, Florida at 2 p.m., Brentwood 2:45, and Atlantic at 3:30. And um, everyone that is not on weekly UAs will be getting their monthly UA today. So please be sure to be drinking plenty of fluids and be ready for that when we get there. Yay! Thanks, you guys. Okay, good morning, jump start. I have to jump because this is Jake's site. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, we're going to have a little music program for you, and um, with no further ado, we'll introduce Brian and his backup supporter, Jake. <laughs> Hello, everybody. So, this is uh, this is. I'm Brian's guitarist. <laughs> he normally gets introduced as the drummer, but I'm his guitarist. So, here we go. I've been searching all my life.
for this next song we'll be uh, performing as Three Happy Sea Creatures and Sylvia. <laughs> Sylvia's a guy for this song. What? <laughs>
of my favorite songs. Thank you guys, and next we'll be doing Freebird. Uh, no, uh, next we would like to get a little joyous with some praise music. Um, we will be expecting you all to sing this with us by the end of the song, as we will be repeating the chorus many, many times. But um, with a little bit of uh, help from the Lord, we're going to have our good friend Billy come up and help us today. So everybody give him a hand. Uh, when I hit the ground, I said, help me.
and Mary's Hope and New Beginnings um, uh, commitment to our donors. And so we have a graphic, a graphic and artist um, man who's in this room who's going to uh, do that. And, um, you know, every once in a while I get my feet underneath me and I get your emails and I get your comments. And there's been so many of you who want to um, do service work for us. And that and we, we, need, we need to fill up that wall with um, people who want to donate so um, we will be uh, sending at 4 o'clock on Tuesday an email about service, and there'll be a link to the website where you can uh, click on and volunteer for sp uh, specific hours for volunteering um, in here. It'll be very organized, and um, anybody that you know, wants to give a couple hours a week um, or as much time as you want it would help us out so much. Um, so again, you'll get an email about that on um, Tuesday at 4 o'clock and anybody that has a little time to help us out We have a couple of things that we want to do. We want to do some research We want to do some calls and we want to get some partners to help people in recovery um, Another thing we're going to do is we're going to ask anybody that wants to participate in um, You know a testimony about new beginnings in Mary's Hope um, Again, that will be a part of the email on uh, Tuesday and so uh, you can just write a quick little write-up that says, hey, um, you know, your experience is here, your strength, your hope for other people in recovery. And finally, we're going to set up, this week, we're going to set up a message room. So at certain hours, you can come in and actually videotape a message. So we've got volunteering, we've got a testimony, we've got message, and we've got Mary's Wall of Hope all going out to you guys to inform you exactly how we're going to do that on Tuesday. Thank you so much for all your calls and um, your patience in getting this rolled out. So thank you. Well, God's Word says this. This is not how I was going to start today, but this is how I'm starting today. <laughs> he says, my people, you are his people. Whether or not you've accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior today or not, you are in this room, and so you are His people. And it says, My people, Mary, are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. We get destroyed because we don't know. We are destroyed because we don't have knowledge. In Proverbs, it says, Get wisdom. Get knowledge. That's we are to seek after it with all of our being, with all of our might. We need to find wisdom. We need to find knowledge. I am so sick and tired of the enemy, Satan, destroying people because they don't have knowledge. They don't know what they are doing. They are going the opposite direction of what God has called them to do. I am tired of Satan robbing men and women through drugs and alcohol and destroying their lives. It is through satanic powers that these kinds of things happen. 
and we give our will over to the power of the enemy, and instead of standing up, we let him kill, steal, and destroy our lives. And I don't know about you, but I am sick of it. I am sick of watching men and women who I adore and love fall to their knees because of the power of heroin, the power of meth, the power of alcohol. Ladies and gentlemen, we have taken on the wrong spirit. We have taken on the wrong power. We need to take on the power of our Lord and Savior who can deliver us from it all. Amen. And we need to stop allowing the enemy, that enemy of yours, to kill, steal, and destroy your life. God did not call you to be a heroin addict. God did not call you to be a meth addict. God did not call you to be an alcoholic. God called you for a bigger and mighty purpose. Amen. He has a purpose for your life. And his purpose is not to watch you destroy yourselves because you have a lack of knowledge and because you will not take 10 minutes to seek him, his kingdom, to seek the word of God and to get <coughs> buried so deep in your heart that nothing will ever knock you over. Nothing will ever take control of your life. When you put on the power of God, he will deliver you from it all. But you have to do something. You have to put it on. You have to take time to gain knowledge. You have to seek him first. It says, children, seek the kingdom of God first, and then all of these things will be added to you. You have to do something. You have to step out of the life that you're in right now. And you have to move your life forward to seek Him and what He has for your life. He has a mighty purpose for every man, woman, and child in this room today. And it is in your heart. You already know what it is. If you just take a moment and look at your heart, just take a moment and feel His presence. The music this morning was awesome, fabulous. We need to begin to worship Him. We need to start a worship service where we're worshiping the Almighty Lord who can deliver you from everything that you have a need of. But here's what we do. We get so enraptured in the movie stars. And, oh, right now it's Bronco season, and, man, we're all into the Broncos right now. And, you know, we don't care that that Bronco player is an alcoholic. We don't care that that Bronco player last week beat up his wife. We don't care because he's a Bronco player. We don't look at what virtues does this man have. What can I really learn from him? Why am I so starstruck with that Bronco player or that movie star who has no virtue? They have no moral character. They really aren't going anywhere. The only thing that they have is fame and money. That's all they have. And yet we bow down to them, and my goodness, they are, you know, we seek after them. We want to be like them. Yet if you took a small thimble, and put all of the virtue in that small thimble, it would rattle around and you could find no virtue in them. But yet we seek after them. We want to be like them. Why is that? Why is it that we are not seeking the all-powerful, almighty God in heaven who can turn our life around? Why are we just seeking those things that we can see with our eyes? Those things that we see with our eyes are going to pass away. The things that we see with our eyes, the things that we seek after are all going to pass away. But it is when we look with our spiritual eyes, the things that we can see through the Spirit, the things that we can look to for, from God, those are the things that are everlasting. Those are the things that will never pass away. We need to be seeking first the kingdom of God. We are the clay. We are the clay. God is our potter. Have you ever watched the uh, talented, creative person put a, take clay and they're going to make a beautiful piece of art? And they take the clay and they start squishing the clay together because it's hard. 
that clay is hard at first and so they're trying to make it pliable and they push the clay together and then all of a sudden they'll add some water to the clay so that they can work with it then they keep pushing it together and then all of a sudden it's softening up that's how we are we're hard we're hard because why are we so hard because we live in this world we should not be a part of the world but we live in the world so we become hard we're hearing all this bad stuff on the news every day we turn on the news and we hear about all of the murders going on and all the police officers <coughs> that are getting killed my god we saw a thing the other day on the news about this police officer that was going after this man and he had a taser gun and I don't know what the man did but he said you need to stop stop and the police officer kept following him and the guy had his hands in his pocket and the cop got right behind him and he said stop stop and that man took out a gun at point-blank range and shot the cop these are the times we are living in disrespect for each other and for our our police officers so God takes this claim and he says you're hard right now and I'm gonna add a little water of the Holy Spirit and I'm gonna try to soften you up and then he puts the clay on the potter's wheel and he's gonna make a beautiful unique piece of artwork and so he's doing this and so maybe he might have to take a piece of clay and pull it off has he done that to you he takes a piece of you and pulls it off he prunes you in areas you don't want to be pruned in. He does that so that you will grow up stronger, so that you will grow up and be a unique piece of artwork for his own good glory. We are the clay. We are not the potter. If we would just open our door just a tiny bit and give ourselves up and let him come and do the work within us, we would be so much further along. But we act like children. Have you ever seen a child in the grocery store or in the toy store and he wants a toy and the mother says, no, I, no, no, and that child has a tantrum? Can you imagine what we must look like to our Father in Heaven? He doesn't give us every little thing that we want. He doesn't let us go every little place that we want to go. And so we have a tantrum. I've seen children have tantrums. My own children have had tantrums before. There was one day that we were in the store and little Chris wanted to get a toy. And I said, no, not today. You're not getting a toy, not today. And he started to cry a little bit and he'd ask again. And I said, no, you're not getting a toy today. And pretty soon, well, no sooner than I had had the word no come out of my mouth, Little Chris threw himself on the floor, started crying, and everybody in the store could hear him crying and crying. And my first reaction was I was embarrassed. All these people were walking by, looking, what, waiting to see what mom is going to do, walking by. So I gently, being the loving, kind mother I am, bent down. I got in my range with him, and I said, Chris, knock it off. <laughs> it didn't do any good. He didn't knock it off. He continued to scream and yell. So again, being the patient, loving, kind mother that I am, I quickly picked him up and I paddled his little behind. And he stopped. It shocked him enough to paddle his little behind. I spanked him and he stopped. That's what God has to do with us sometimes. He has to paddle our little behind so that we stop having a tantrum. I won't tell everybody that was just about two weeks ago. <laughs> and I still got what I wanted. <laughs> When we act like a child, he is going to treat us like a child. We need to get to a point where we go stand in front of a mirror and tell ourselves to grow up. We need to grow up. We need to seek maturity. We need to find wisdom. And we need to grow up. In Psalms 119, 105, it says, 
Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It is time that we understood that God's word is true. It is living. It will bring light into your life. In 2 Peter 1, Simon Peter, who is a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, said this. He says, we have each received the same measure of faith. God did not give me more faith than what he gave to you. God didn't have a cauldron out there and, you know, he has a big ladle and he's going to scoop out this much faith and give it to Peter. And he's going to then take a tablespoon and give it to Paul. And then he's going to take a teaspoon and give it to Sarah. No, he doesn't do that. He gave us, each one of us, the same measure of faith. How unfair would it have been if he gave more faith to one person than what he did to another person? He gave us all the same measure of faith. It is up to us what we do with that measure of faith. And then he says, may grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. We need to gain knowledge of him. His divine power has granted, his divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence by which, which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises. Now listen, you can go off to college and you can get a grant to pay for your college. If you're a nonprofit organization, we can apply for a grant for various things. This scripture is saying to you, ladies and gentlemen, that God has given you your very own special grant. He has granted to you the way to go. He has granted to you power and might. He has given you a grant for everything in life that you have need of. Everything. Not just some things. Everything. That means that if you have an illness today, he's given you a grant saying, I'm going to heal you. He, that means if you have an addiction today, he is telling you, hey, listen, here's a grant. I'm going to take that away from you. If you have poverty in your life today, he says, here, I'm going to give you a grant so that you can prosper in all ways of your life. Here's the problem. We don't take it. We don't believe it. We do not believe that that is possible for us. We do not believe that if we have a sickness, that he will take that sickness away. We don't believe that. Why don't we believe it? Why do we not believe? No faith. We haven't been exercising our faith mu muscles enough to receive the power and gifts and the grants that he has given to us. You know what we do? We plan to be sick. We plan it. We think, oh my goodness, uh, let's see, it's going to be April and I have all these allergies and it's allergy season and we make preparation. <laughs> we prepare ourselves. We, are, we think about, we research on the internet, what am I going to take this year for my allergies? That's what we do. We're planning it. We plan ahead. We plan to be sick. We think, oh my God, my father died of cancer. Oh my goodness, I have a pain in my side. Oh no, I bet I, I bet I have cancer. He had cancer, I bet I got cancer. I'm almost sure that I do. We plan, we plan it. And not only do we plan to be sick, not only do we plan to have cancer, but we plan our funeral. We go, oh my God, I got cancer. I bet I'm gonna die. I better plan my funeral. Here's my last rites. We plan in the negative. We plan for sickness, we plan for disease, and we need to stop that, and we need to start planning to get God's Word in our heart and speaking His Word so that we can stop the, the attacks of the enemy. Who's the enemy? Satan. Satan. We need to do that. 1 Peter 5, 6 says, humble yourselves. We could use a little humbleness, ladies and gentlemen. There's a lot of people out there that are walking around in false pride. We need to use a little humble pie once in a while. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, 
Casting. Casting. That word casting. You know what that word reminds me of? I used to go fishing a lot, and I would take my reel and I would cast it out into the lake. Casting. That's what casting. Casting like a reel out into the lake. All of your care. Casting all of your care. All of your anxieties. Why do we have anxiety? Why do we need to take a pill for anxiety? Why? Yeah. When we have a word right here that he is saying, cast all of your care. Cast your anxieties on him. Why? Because he cares for you. Be sober-minded. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. <coughs> I mean, he's there. He's always there. He's always there, seeking somebody to devour. He's waiting for you to make a mistake. He's waiting for you to stumble. He's waiting for you to have a craving. He's, wa he's waiting for you to have a craving so that you will go to the drug dealer and fix your craving instead of going to God to set you free. That is what the devil does. He roams around like a <coughs> roaring lion. He's not a roaring lion, but he pretends to be. He is the father of lies. And so it says, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls about like a roaring lion, seeking something to devour. What do we do? What are we going to do? When that happens, what do we do? Well, it says this. If you would read your Bible, it says what we're supposed to do right here. It says, resist him. Well, that's a unique concept, isn't it? You get a craving. You want to go to the drug dealer. What should you do? You resist it. How do you resist it? You sit on your hands. You have somebody tie you up. You do anything. You resist. You resist him. You stand firm in your faith. That measure of faith God gave you. You stand firm in the faith. Knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And then it says after you've suffered for a little while. The God of all grace. Who called you to his eternal glory in Christ. Will himself. God himself will restore and confirm and strengthen and establish you. We need to withstand Satan. We need to be firm in that faith that he has given to us. And we need to start building our faith up by the word of God. We need to watch what we're saying. We don't understand the power behind our words. We don't understand that God made the earth by speaking it into existence. He spoke a word and it was there. That is how the earth is here. It wasn't, we were not all for by some little, you know, creature that turned into a human being. That's not how we got here. Through Christ we got here. Second Corinthians says, So we look not at the things that are seen, but at the things which are unseen. For the things which are visible are temporary, but the things which are invisible are everlasting. The invisible things, the angels, are invisible. The Holy Spirit is invisible. Jesus Christ, we can't see him with our eyes, but we know in our spirit that he is with us wherever we go. We need to be careful what we're talking about. We need to be like wise men and women. We need to be walking out the truth of God's word in our life because he will help you with everything that you have need of. We need to give faith. There was an old lady and she was so full of faith that she just was so excited about God and who he was that every morning she went out on her porch and she yelled, Praise the Lord! And there was this nasty neighbor that lived next door to her who was an atheist. And he went out on his porch and he said, Oh, there ain't no such thing as the Lord. And she would go back in her house. And so one day she was needing some food. And she went out on her porch and she said, Now, Lord, you know I'm having some hard times here. Lord, I believe that you're going to bring me some groceries. 
Next morning, she went, opened the door, and there on her front porch was a bag of groceries. She went out. She said, oh, praise you, Lord, for giving me groceries. And this nasty old man was hiding behind the bushes, and he peeked up, and he said, I told you there ain't no Lord. He said, I bought you those groceries. And the woman said, oh, praise you, Lord, for giving me groceries, and you even made the devil pay for them. <laughs> That's what we need to do. That's how we need to be. That's how strong in our faith we should be. We should be thanking God whether it looks good, looks right, looks indifferent or whatever. We know that we are mighty. We know we are strong. We know we are men and women of God. And we know that he is only going to bring good things to our path. And that he is going to deliver us from them all. In Mark 11, it says this. Jesus is talking to his people. And he says this. Have faith in God constantly. Have faith in God constantly. He said, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, whoever, are you a whoever? Are you going to be a whoever person? You need to be a whoever person. He says, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says is going to take place, it will be done for him, in accordance with God's will. For this reason I am telling you, whatever things you ask for in prayer, in accordance with God's will, believe it with confident trust that you have received them, and they will be given to you. That's how we have faith in God. We, have, we might have a mountain of debt on our doorstep today. You speak to that debt. You tell that debt to go and be cast into the sea. And then you believe and trust God that he is going to bring you the power to get well. Because he said he would in Deuteronomy. He said, it is I that gives you the power to get well. You need to talk to your mountains today. You have a power secret right now today. If you have Christ in your life, you have his power living inside of you. Here's our problem. <coughs> Our problem is, is that we don't use the power. We just go through life, ho-hum, do-dee-dee, and we don't use the power inside of us. We have power in our words. If you want to change your life, then you need to start talking over your life. Stop speaking negative things over. I hate it. I hate it. When people come to me and say, well, I just love you to death, I love you to death. My God, I should be dead a long time ago for every time somebody said, I love you to death. Please do not love me to death. I do not want it. But we say foolish things like that. Or, oh gosh, ha, that joke, it tickled me to death. <laughs> Why didn't it tickle you to life? Why do you not love me to life? Why do you love me to death? Our words are power sources. Our words can create life. Our words can also create death. Be careful what you're saying. Be careful how you talk to your children. You tell your children, oh, you're just so stupid. Well, you, you better watch out because they're going to be stupid. Watch how you speak to your children. Watch how you speak to your husband. Watch how you speak to your wife. Watch how you speak to your friend. You should be in a position to build each other up and stop tearing each other down. You know, stop gossiping and tearing your... Oh, did you hear what happened to Mary? Oh, my God. You, everybody wants to say the negative side of things. Nobody wants to talk positive. We need to start using our faith, using our words to be creative to create things, to create our life in a positive way. Listen, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is, do you have hope in your life today? Are you hopeful today? Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. We should not be walking by sight. We should be walking by our faith by the things we do not see with our eyes. 
We need to get a new vision, ladies and gentlemen. What is your vision today for your life? What is your vision? What is your hope for your life? You need to write it down. Write down your goals. In Habakkuk, it says you need to write down your goals. Why is he telling us to write down? Because he knows more about you than what you do. Write down your goals. That's why I have said over and over and over and over and over again that when you come to a meeting like this, you should come prepared with pen and paper because God is going to try to get you a message through these messages and you're going to walk out that door and forget what it even was because we haven't written it down. Write it down. Write down your goals. Write down your plans that you have for your future. Now, God may lead you in a different direction as he has me. I never should be here today. This is not the direction that I had planned for my life. I have a different plan for me. I wanted something different for me than what I am doing today. This is not where I should be today. Me, 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 I, I, I. But God, when I let God have control, look at what he has done. He's led me in a different way. He'll probably do the same thing with you. You might have some big fancy degree. I don't have a degree. You might have a big fancy degree, but he might lead you in a different direction than what you have planned for your life. Be flexible. Don't be so fuddy-duddy and so strict and, you know, this is me and I'm not going to give anybody a chance to help me. You know, after all, i got all the answers here. You know? Don't be like that. Be flexible. Let God into your life. We are living in the last days, ladies and gentlemen, whether you believe that or not. And I'm going to leave you with a question today. What would you do? What would you do if you knew for a fact that the Lord Savior would be coming back in the month of August 2017? What would you do? What would you do? Now, I want you to think about it. What would you do if you knew for a fact that Jesus Christ was going to blow the trumpet and come after his church in August of 2017? What would you do? What would you be doing? What would you be doing? Now, I'm telling you, this is a real possibility. I'm not just blowing smoke. This is a real possibility. The Bible says, no man will know the day or the hour of my return. He didn't say we wouldn't know the month or the year. He said the day or the hour. I am saying you need to start checking your heart. Are you right with God? Do you even believe in him? Are you willing to allow him to direct your steps? What if he would come back this month? What would we do? We should be getting our families saved because we don't want our children, our families, to be left behind if this is a real deal where he could come right now. I will tell you this, I promise you it is the truth. Every prophetic thing that has been written in the Bible has come and been fulfilled as of right now. There is not one thing left to be fulfilled that was written in the Bible. Not one. Not one thing. Not one thing. This is a real possibility that Christ could return at any minute. Are you ready? Are you ready to go? Are you ready to go with him in this beautiful day and hour? My God, it is a real possibility. Is your family saved? Are you the one that could help get your children, your brothers, your sisters, your moms, your dads saved? Are you the one that's going to witness to them to help them? so that they're not left behind in these last days? It's a real question that I ponder. Not all of my family is saved. My heart breaks for them. You're part of my family. I'm talking about my blood family. I have family that's not saved. It would break my heart to see them have to go through the trials and tribulations that the Bible speaks of and to have them be left behind. But it's a real possibility. I don't want that for any person in this room. I want you to ponder this. 
And I want you to take today's message very seriously. Because God led me in a whole total different direction than what it was planned to be. I want you to really take this seriously today. So bow your heads and uh, let's pray for those unsaved people. Father God, I just thank you for the message that you brought forth today, Lord God. And Father God, I just thank you that you have given us wisdom and that you have given us knowledge and that even though we don't know the day and the hour of your return, we know that it is close and we know it could happen at any minute, Father God. It may not even happen this year, but it could. Lord God, prepare our hearts to receive you today, Lord God. If there's any in the room that are, have not received you, Father God, I pray that you open their heart and ask them to ask you to come into their heart so that you can lead and direct their life. Father God, we pray for the unsaved loved ones, Lord, that you send the Holy Spirit to seek after them, to bring them into the kingdom. We lift them up. We pray for them, Lord God. And your word says if we pray for them, that you will go and you will find them and that you will seek after them. For anyone in the room who has a friend or a relative that is using drugs or drinking that needs help, Father God, bring them to us, Lord God, because this is the place that they can receive help today. Father God, we love you so much, and we just thank you for your word. We know that it is life to our soul, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Who has a prayer request today? Uh, yeah, Donnie. Uh, I would like to pray for all the people who carry prejudice. Um, it's not just black and white. It's addicts and normies and single parents and traditional families. Uh, life is too short to waste time drawing lines. That's right, Donnie. Thank you. I agree with you. Yes. I'm sorry? People in Virginia. Thank you. Yes. Uh, yeah, Ryan. Uh, I'd like to pray for uh, Lieutenant Tanya and Lieutenant Tim. Uh, some of you in here might know them, uh, but today is their last day at the Salvation Army Aurora Corps. They uh, took a promotion. They've helped thousands of uh, addicts uh, find the Lord, and uh, she definitely saved my life. So I just pray that they have a safe transition to California and uh, keep saving lives. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yes, David. I'd like to pray for my family, Robert and family. I lost my mother, lost my arm. I'm just wondering if I'll pray for my family. Mm -hmm. um, my heart goes out to you, David. I'm sorry to hear that. Yes, Glenn. And we can ask God and our higher power to take our ego, to take our pride, mm -hmm. and to deflate that. Each piece of humble pie that we take, and each serving that we eat, that we get a little <clears throat> bit of strength, and we get a little bit of self confidence. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you for that. Yes, Wendy. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Yes, That's okay. <laughs> um, I have two. I have one. A friend of mine lost her mom this last week to cancer. It, was, it had returned, and it was really quick. Um, and then another one is hard to talk about, but a friend of mine who lost her son three years ago, to, or four years ago today. She's had really, really struggling with the death of her, but he was four. And so, just for healing and comfort for her and her family. Thank you. Yes. Uh, for my friend, uh, Bill Lowe, he's an alcoholic. He was murdered by the Denver Police Department. He said that he had a weapon on him. He was shot seven times. He didn't even have a weapon. What is the family's name? Gonzalez. Say it one more time. Gonzalez. Gonzalez. All right. Thank you. Yes. I keep getting um, emails from uh, Kristen Hawkins. She's part. I guess she's like president over um, campuses that provide uh, aid for uh, women that have gone through abortion, and they're also go through and they're trying to put it into like Planned Parenthood. So she just asked that, you know, uh, people, you know, that I, I make known, you know, okay. and, and let that up in prayer. Thank you. Monica? I just want to praise the Lord for my journey the last six months. Thank you. Really? Uh, I've been struggling just living for a weekly paycheck, and, and yesterday I talked to a lady about maybe going to Uganda to do some work. So I really? Talked, wow. Talked to my sponsor and Dean last week about it, and just, I don't know what will happen, but get the ball rolling. All right. 
you should come talk to me. Okay, yes, Justin. I would just ask that you pray over us that we can see the benefit in honesty and allowing God to truly direct us and not take your self will before God's grace. Yes, yeah. thank you, Justin. <coughs> um, thank God for the restoration of my family and asking for the name to be restored and be able to establish all the ties and high cause. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else for Summer? Um, I pray for all of us to work together to represent Mary in her vision of hope instead of disrespecting each other by <coughs> jealousy and envy and other character defects that we fall to. Okay. Thank you. Billy? I'd like to ask for prayer for my current roommates and the roommates that I will be uh, beginning to know and come into the fold. Okay. The preparation of their hearts and recovery. Thank you. Hi. Uh, yes, I would like to pray for everyone to just look inside themselves and find their calling. Um, I know that for me personally, that was my only way out of that addiction mm -hmm. was to follow that. Mm -hmm. Good advice. Thank you, Heidi. Um, yes, Renee. For my friend Grace, who's coming back from death's doorstep, she's in a horrible car accident and she just came out of a coma. Yeah. Okay. Glenn, would you mind coming up and doing the prayer today? <laughs> so we stand ready as soldiers.